Our journey of going from local to global in TEW9 is coming along nicely, as in the last episode, we went from insignificant size to tiny, taking us one step closer to the ultimate goal of Titanic. With us now just a few months away from signing our first broadcast deal, today we have a whole bunch of stuff to do behind the scenes in order to make sure we're in the strongest position to grow as fast as possible. This includes making several cuts to our current roster and staff, whilst bringing in some big names to plug the gap ahead of the second annual strong style showdown and if you haven't already done so drop a like on the video as we aim for 200 likes to unlock the next episode make sure you head over to the patreon page if you want to gain access to several save points including where we're starting at today and be sure to purchase the game using the banner at the top of tewdb.com if you haven't already done so and today is actually a pretty big episode as now we've finally hit 17 and now that we're at the next size it's time to go through the company and make sure that everything is ready for for this next level that includes making some roster cuts as well as signing some talent for the upcoming strong style showdown so we're actually going to start off with the roster cuts so let's go through the divisions and find out who isn't good enough to be on this roster anymore so we're going to go to the heavyweight division first and the first person that might be on the chopping block is the butcher now i do like him and i think he's a good talent however he is 48 years old now and i'm having issues with his stamina and when I try and book him in a match that's over like 10 minutes it gives me a warning I think that sort of tells me that he's not going to be able to keep up with the rest of the company at this point he's very popular but in terms of the ratings that he brings in so if we go to his individual ratings for his last match with Mike DiVecchio he got a 43 so he is keeping up with the world champion but if we also go to strong style 19 he got a 36 so essentially he's just as good as talent that are working for half if not less the price so yeah all of those factors involved i think we're gonna have to let him go so how we're gonna do it is he will be part of the strong style showdown but we're gonna offer him a new contract that will be a one appearance deal so we're gonna try and get his contract down to what he's on at the minute which is 190 actually we need to apply the template first but 190 and we're gonna do three months and one appearance and he does want merchandise so we'll give him 10 percent. i think he might actually be on 15 at this point and he is so that's a done deal we're going to see him one more time and maybe some point in the future but i feel like he is pretty close to retirement at this point although he is an active member of the mwf which is the new massive wrestling federation that was generated by the game and yeah he will continue to work on so that's good to see so maybe we'll see him down the road but i'm not too sure now let's refer back to the spreadsheet and you'll see right at the bottom here Eric Hammer and Joshua Bishop are both pretty much on average getting 33s in the heavyweight division and they're quite clearly our two worst wrestlers and also Baron Black isn't doing much better but I think for the wages that they're on I think we're going to keep them for now but I would say their time in the company especially sort of Eric Hammer at the age of 46 I think his days are numbered but we will be finishing off his feud with Mike DiVecchio the heavyweight champion before we consider cutting him so we're going to keep them for now but let's move on to the junior heavyweight division and see <laughs> what we're going to do there and I think we've got a bit of a situation going on with Rey Mysterio 4 the only reason he's not cut is because we're his only employer. So this one here isn't a real company, it's just an independent show that's been generated by the game, but we are actually his only employer. So he's only had two matches for us, and in both appearances, his match against LJ Cleary, he got a 10 rating, and his match against Ninja Mac got a 10 rating. His personality isn't the best, which we knew when we signed him, and it was something that we were gonna try and deal with, but that hasn't happened so far. And his ratings, I don't think, are worth the hassle of trying to rehabilitate him at this point. Not only that, but Rey Mysterio 4 was going to be our sort of main luchador heel. And we're going to try and build up that mask prestige. However, we then found Viano Free Jr. Who is everything, basically, that we wanted Rey Mysterio 4 to become. But he's already that. And I think he's actually better than Rey Mysterio will actually be at any point. So if you see here, Rey's technicals 35. Aerially, he's got 30. Viano has 73 and 79 so it's going to be a good few years if ever that Rey Mysterio 4 reaches that point he's also better in 
fundamental aspect and he's actually better in performance as well and it's not like this is some old veteran of the wrestling business this guy's only 28 and he's only three years older than Rey Mysterio 4 so with that said I don't think we need two luchador heels we've got probably the best one in the world right now that's at least available in Viano 3 Jr so that means instead of keeping the son of Rey Mysterio we're going to keep the son of Viano 3 that being Viano 3 Jr so Rey Mysterio 4 and unfortunately is going to be leaving the company and the way we're going to do it is he's currently annoyed is angry at a pre-show interaction that we had when we called him out in front of everybody. We're going to try and make him happy before he leaves in case we do want to re-sign him later down the line and he doesn't hold it against us and not sign with us and refuse to talk to us basically, which can happen. So we're going to go to gift bonuses or time off and we're going to give him three months off. Paid time off as well. So Whenever we hold a show, we're going to be paying him. I think he's on $20. So by the time that time off is over, he should be happy, at which point we can let him go. So we're going to do that. And apparently he's still annoyed. <laughs> okay. Maybe his morale issue will be gone by the time that's finished anyway. That's the hope. And it's at least given him a small boost of morale. Not quite enough to get him to green. But what we're also going to do is give him a three-month contract. So by the time his time off is finished, he will no longer be working for us. So we're going to offer him $20 per show on a three-month deal. And we're just going to offer him that. So he does want merchandise cut. Uh, so how about 10%? We're going to be giving him $20 per show for the next three months, which will probably be six shows. So that's $120. So it's pretty much nothing. And yeah, we're going to go with that. So hopefully he can go out and develop and sign somewhere else. But I've just got the feeling nobody's going to sign him. And I think there's a reason for it. Whilst he's really good in some aspects, he's terrible in others. So yeah, the Rey Mysterio 4 project is officially over. That also means we're going to take him out of this junior division section just so we're a bit clearer of what we have. So Cody Chun is somebody, if we take a look at the individual ratings for the junior heavyweight division, he does pretty well. He gets 37. I think maybe 37 or so will be the cutoff point at this point. Although Hallow Wicked is a little bit older, but he's useful backstage, so I we might keep him. As I was saying, we do only want one luchador heel, though, and that's Viano. We did sign Hallow Wicked to be a jobber, so if we look at his last rating at... Strong style 22. He got a 35 actually. Um, but I think his attributes sort of edge him there. So he passes on knowledge. He's easy to do business with. So he doesn't mind losing matches. And yeah, I think I think we'll keep him. But he'll just remain a jobber going forward. So I lied. We're actually going to have two luchador heels. But obviously they're going to be on completely different levels. Viano is going to be competing for titles. Hollow Wicked is going to be losing pretty much all the time. But he can be somebody that we just use to get baby faces over. That maybe we're bringing in or just to reestablish certain guys as dominant, you know. So yeah, we're going to go with that. LJ Cleary is, is of course safe. Kevin Blackwood is more than safe. Josh Cody is somebody that's safe for now. And Cody Chun, I think we're quite happy to keep as... He is an original. He's only 29 and I think he's got good skills across the board. And I think we're going to see improvements from him going forward. He's sort of around the 40s mark, which is more than enough for what we need right now. So that's the junior heavyweight division in terms of releases. That puts us on three faces and three heels. So I didn't actually check the heel face divide for heavyweights. So let's take a look. And we're currently, without the butcher, it would be three heels and three faces. So I'm happy with that for now. In terms of the women's division, I think we pretty much sorted those out in the last episode. And we've got three heels, five faces, actually. I think we'll leave it for now. And I think it's just the two exits, Rey Mysterio, four, and the butcher at this point. But... They will be happening at some point in the future after the Strong Style Showdown, as we said, with The Butcher, who's got one appearance left, and Raymond Studio 4 will be getting paid for the next three months. So that's cuts for now. We will be bringing in some wrestlers for the showdown, so let's do that now. And I mostly know who we're going to bring in, and it's going to involve working with other companies. So we're going to try and build some relationships with companies in Europe. And we're going to be bringing in some wrestlers that I had my eye on when this save was originally going to be in Europe, still as Strong Style Amsterdam. But when I decided to move to the United States, part of the project would be to bring those guys over to America and make them stars here. So we're going to start that process now. And I'll show you the names that we're looking at. So first off, we need to build some relationships with the companies that we have in mind. So 
Butch Pro Wrestling, we've already got a good relationship with. Pro Wrestling Holland, we've got a good relationship with. And Westside Extreme Wrestling, we've got a good relationship with. We also need a good relationship with Banger Zone Wrestling in France. So we're going to adopt a friendly attitude with them. I don't want to do an alliance just yet because with alliance loans, it's a one way thing where you just get a wrestler and you pay to have them. Whereas with trades, talent trades, you can trade wrestlers back so we can get some more reps for some of our wrestlers. So we're going to do that and we're going to propose a talent trade with Banger Zone Wrestling and they're happy to agree. We're also going to do the same with Dutch Pro Wrestling and they've declined, which is fine. They feel that the companies do not share a strong enough bond. OK, so that's something we can work on. Pro Wrestling Holland. Let's see if they're up for it. And they're not. <laughs> OK. And how about WXW? And they think we're too small at this point. OK. That's fine. So it looks like we're just going to be working with Banger's own wrestling for now, which is good because two of the people that we want to bring in are on their roster. Before we actually try and loan them, let's take a look at them. So we're going to go to two higher on the shortlist. So first up, we're looking at Agle Blanc, who works for WXW and BZW. He's currently around 100 a show, but he's big up and coming luchador in France. And I think he's actually going to be quite a big name at some point. He's probably one of the most popular guys in France right now. And they've really got a scene starting to boom with BZW and there's some other companies as well. APC, I believe it's called. And there's a couple of others, I think. But Eagle Blanc is one of the main guys at this point. And you can see that he's got 75 aerial flashiness, 82 safety, 78 and consistency, 77 basics, 87. And whilst we have a heel luchador, we don't have a face luchador and I want Eagle Blanc to be that guy. He does work in America so we could really negotiate with him straight up but we would have to pay his travel. So if he's not willing to move to the USA, which I don't think he will be, we'll try though. Yeah he's happy in Europe. That means we're gonna have to get him through a loan and I'm not sure if we'll have to pay travel with a loan though. So that is something we'll have to check once we've signed him. We're basically gonna try and get him now and we're also gonna bring in his former tag team partner, now rival, Joseph Fennec Jr. I I think that's how it's pronounced. So he's basically, like I said, a former tech team partner of Eagle Blanc as the French adores. So they're both French. And he used to work under the gimmick of Senza Volto, where he was a masked luchador. And I believe he unmasked himself recently and turned heel. So he's basically Eagle Blanc's arch nemesis at this point. At least that's how we're going to book them. So they're both going to come in for the qualifying round of the Strong Style Showdown and we're going to work from there. He is also the PWH or Pro Wrestling Holland heavyweight champion in the game and so it seems they signed him and gave him the belt which is understandable when you look at his stats. So fundamentally he's solid across the board. 86 stamina, 84 basics. There's work to be done in terms of primary. His highest being aerial but he's still pretty good and he's pretty good technically and brawling as well experience 95 so he's been working 12 years at this point he's pretty charismatic at 65 i think that could probably be higher but that's something that we can work on through promos and i think he's just another sort of hidden gem in europe that we're looking to bring over and he works for many promotions german wrestling federation wxw and pro wrestling holland he doesn't work in the united states right now but with a loan he would become active as soon as we use him so that's something that we're going to do they're the two junior heavyweights that we're going to bring in for the tournament and they will actually be going one-on-one -on -one as well in the qualifiers so only one will appear in the showdown elimination match for the junior heavyweight division so there's actually three types of trades you can do so talent trade this allows you to take workers from another company on a short-term loan in exchange for some of your workers and or cash going in the opposite direction talent offer this allows you to offer workers from your roster to another company for loan without asking for anything in return which is great work might be something that we start doing talent swap this allows you to propose a permanent swap of workers from your roster with workers from another company so that might be interesting but i would like them to stay in in bzw to be honest at least for the short term so there's no way of doing sort of two at once so we're going to go with single worker for i think two appearances for now and we're going to try and get eagle blanc and we're going to offer somebody in return so he's on 180 per show and that value mostly comes from his popularity in europe as you can see he's up to 44 in western europe but he has zero popularity in the united states so it's definitely a project 
in terms of getting him seen. And actually another thing that we can look at is what sort of ratings he gets in a region where he's popular. And he can get 64 there for WXW. And if we look at BZW as well, he gets 59. So that's the sort of ratings we'll be looking at for these two. And you can see here that Joseph gets a 53 and they got a 55 rated match there. So once they get popular in the United States, I really think they can bring us in some ratings. So yeah. Like I say, let's try and do that. And in return for Eagle Blanc, we will be offering somebody that might be already popular in the United States. Maybe we can get Rey Mysterio for some work. Let's check out his popularity. He's got zero popularity in Europe, so it might be difficult to pull this one off, actually. But it says there they would not be open to that offer. So let's actually just scroll through and see if anybody pops up as green. So do we have anyone at all that's popular in Europe? We have Killer Kelly, very popular in Europe especially in Iberia, which is Portugal, which isn't BZW's region, of course, so that might be an issue. So we're going to try again. Two appearances for Eagle Blanc for Killer Kelly. And let's say, why not? I've rejected the proposal as I don't think they're getting a good deal. Okay, so we might have to do this a different way. And I was saying before I didn't want to do a alliance because we wouldn't be able to offer somebody in exchange but it looks like they don't want anybody in exchange anyway so that means we're going to be creating an alliance to try and do this so let's found new alliance and we're going to call it the global alliance of wrestling yeah i think we'll go with global alliance of wrestling that sounds fine and we're going to make it a trading alliance nothing more and we're also going to make it open to everybody because we'll be deciding who to bring in so we'll just do it on a case-by-case -case basis and let's do it we'll also sort out a logo at some point in the future so that has been founded then so we have an official alliance and we now need to invite a new member to join so we're going to just filter it to europe right now although there are some other promotions that i might bring in actually we'll keep it to everything so we're going to go with bangers own wrestling and invite them and they're happy to come in which is good we'll also try now oh, i want to bring in Jern simmons we haven't discussed him yet who if you remember is a former strong style heavyweight champion in the Amsterdam era. He was the first ever heavyweight champion in the company. So we're going to invite Pro Wrestling Holland and they're happy to join as well. And I think we'll just keep it to one Dutch promotion for now. So it looks like Pro Wrestling Holland are our guys in the homeland. WXW, I think we'll leave for now. I don't think they're interested in working with us anyway. And we don't want to fill it up too much. And we're also going to work or we'll try and work with, I think, Dragon Gate. Now, their product is Lucha Rezu, which is the same as ours. So it's Lucha mixed with the Japanese style, which is our product, basically. And they've got some really good wrestlers as well. So we're going to invite Dragon Gate. And they're already in alliance. OK, so they can't work with us. I think that'll do for now. We're just going to focus on what we need at this point, And then we can sort of look at other members in the future as and when we need them. But we don't need them for now. So let's try and get a alliance loan from bangers own wrestling so in order to get eagle blanc we need to pay 180 dollars per show the admin fee to complete this would be 50 dollars and can we choose how long we have him for apparently not but he's on the roster anyway so we can look at how long he's here for he's here for one appearance okay so whoever wins out of him and Fennec will have to sign again on a one appearance deal but what this will do is make it so they might be more tempted to work in the United States at some point if they keep getting appearances with us um but yeah let's get in Joseph then so if we go to Banger Zone Wrestling once again propose alliance loan Joseph Fennec Jr propose loan and he's coming in as well. Okay, so now we need to speak to Pro Wrestling Holland and get in Jern Simmons, and we'll take a look at him in a second. He's only going to cost $100 per show, and it'll be a $30 admin fee, which is fine. So they're three additions to the roster. So let's take a look at them over here. So if we go to Role Wrestler Division None, they will be under here. So Adam Priest is there. We didn't take a look at him during the Junior Heavyweight Review because he's currently injured, and it is till February. So he's going to be out for quite a while. Eagle Blanc, as I say, coming in as the babyface luchador. At least that's the plan long term. Whether we can convince him to move to the United States is a completely different issue. But he's in, so is Joseph Fennec Jr. We need to change his picture so he's not got the mask on. And yeah, we're happy to save that. As for Jern Simmons, as we said earlier, he is a former champion in strong style. So on the previous save in TW 2016, and obviously we carried over the title lineage and there it is there, Strong Style Heavyweight Championship. He had one defense and held it for 173 days. So he will be coming in into the Strong Style Showdown and he automatically qualifies for the elimination match. So he doesn't need to compete 
in the qualifiers. And this is because he's a former heavyweight champion, as is Michael Dante and Mike DiVecchio. However, we do have an open slot currently in the qualifiers for the heavyweight division. So we're going to have to try and bring somebody else in that can compete in that round. But what we're going to do for now is take a quick look at Yearn. He's solid across the board. 64 for brawling, uh, safety 88. So he's not going to be injuring anyone or there's no real risk of it anyway. He's pretty consistent. He's got the basics down. He's got good stamina. He's charismatic and he, I think he could get even better. He's only 34. So I think there's room for improvement. In terms of attributes, actually, we haven't looked at that. He's better as a heel, but I think we will bring him in as a baby face. Uh, and he's already set to that, luckily. For Net Jr., we didn't look at the attributes neither. He can't play comedy. He's creative, so he will bring his own ideas to us. He's a dynamo, so he won't hold back. He's easy to do business with, so he's up for losing. He's fearless, so he's up for big bumps, basically. He's a fitness fanatic. He's got a hot new move, which should give us a boost for his matches. And he's professional and will risk injury as well. Eagle Blanc's better as a babyface, which is the plan anyway. And let's just check for Net Jr. is a heel, which he is, okay. Eagle Blanc is professional and he's a risk taker and he's a world traveler so he has a higher chance than normal of choosing to become available in a new area and i believe he's already active in the united states which he is and for neck junior isn't but he will once he appears for us and Ian simmons also is available over here as well so it's now it's just a matter of convincing these three to actually come over to america and hopefully we can start that process at this strong style showdown so that's it for the loan signings now we need to bring in somebody else for the heavyweight division and i'm thinking of finding sort of a young up-and-coming heavyweight that is probably going to lose in the qualifier but we can use it as sort of a testing ground whether they're going to be worth bringing in on a full-time basis so we're going to ask for maximum age of 30 we're also going to say based near the mid south so we're not having to pay travel to hire of course and we'll keep popularity off so we'll keep our options open and we're going to ask for good basics and that might just be it maybe 70 stamina as well so 80 basics 70 stamina and here's the options and actually we need to add the weight limit on as well so is at least 220 pounds and the only one that comes up is king rex okay a masked luchador which we don't have in the heavyweight division right now his best attributes is a flyer so he would bring a different dynamic to the division for sure he's actually pretty good he's got good basics he's consistent good safety as well the only issue is he's actually in mexico so we would still have to pay $100 to bring him in. How much is he asking for? 30 How about we speak to him and see if he'll move over? No, he's not interested. I reckon we do it anyway. Because if we can get him under contract, we might be able to have more sway in persuading him to move over. That mask looks a bit weird. So I'm going to try and see if there's any other photos of him to give us a better idea of what he looks like. So yeah, there are actually some photographs, as you can see on screen, that... He looks a little bit more serious and a little bit more sinister. So he's not a cartoon dinosaur in some of them. So I think actually that's fine. And I think we should just give him a shot. Why not? Let's check his attributes first though. He's an amazing baby face. Better as a baby face. Comedy match worker. We won't be doing that though. He's easily marketable. So once we're selling individual wrestlers merchandise, he will be coming in useful. He's a people person. So he has a major positive natural impact backstage. And he's also a risk taker. So yeah, I'd say we do it. We have to try and convince him to actually work in the USA first. And he's done it. Okay, right, let's go. And does that mean we can now persuade him to move closer? Not just yet. So we'll actually ask him again once he's signed the contract. But we're going to offer him $20 for three years. He's probably, you know, he wants travel. That's fine. So we're going to be paying 100 for his travel. And yeah, he wants a cut of merchandise as well. So we'll try 10%. And yeah, I'm, that's actually an interesting sign. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. And there could be potential there. And he's definitely unique in that heavyweight division, at least. As we don't really have any sort of flyers or luchadors. They're all quite brawling based. An interesting one there. And we'll see how he gets on when he comes in. We we'll also need to change the picture so he doesn't look as cartoonish. And I think that's about it in terms of wrestlers. And now there is some other things that I'm considering on doing in this episode. So I want to go through sort of all the backstage roles. So that includes referee. So let's take a look at our referee, Danilo Amphibio. And I want to see if there's anybody better than him that's available for a similar price. So he's got 74 refereeing. So we're going to search for intention to hire based in Mid-South or based near Mid-South. And we're going to go for 75 refereeing and see what comes up. So we've got Adrian Butler. He's working at NXT on a handshake deal, interestingly. And he also works for 
the Fi. He's on $270 per show. The Neo is on 100 What is his skill? So he's at 91 referee. I think that might have persuaded me to bring him in, you know. Um, we've also got Kai Douglas, who's on 80, and Scarlett Donovan, who is 75. But Adrian Butler there, 91 refereeing. Do we bring him in? $270 per show, but he's really good. Now, actually, let's take a look at the refereeing skill and exactly what it does mm -hmm. so we know what you'll be doing. In terms of refereeing, refereeing is simply a measure of how skilled the worker is at officiating a match. Unlike most skills, refereeing is an absolute value. This means that the size of the company or quality of the match is not relevant to that required level. So what I want to know, though, is if it improves the ratings of the match if you have a better referee. So let's see if it says. So scores over 75, 80, and 90 will get increasingly powerful bonuses. Note that if a referee is overworked, his refereeing value gets reduced. Okay. So it seems it is bonuses for having a better referee. I say we do it. Let's just bring him in. We're going to try and get that down, though. So we'll try 240, three years. Let's see what he says. So he wants 250. I'm happy with that. EPA. He wants merchandise as well. So how about 5, 10, 15, 20? No, really? 25? Okay. So we're happy with this? Actually, we need to say, we'll be a referee. Maybe we can get that down to 230. Yeah, he's, he's he wants 250. Okay. We probably could have got that down had we changed that first, but that's fine. And um, we're going to go with that. So we've got a better referee coming in. I'm not sure what that means for the future of Danio for now. I think that might mean he's leaving. Maybe we have two referees, one for the main events, so the one referee isn't being overworked. Yeah, that might be what we do. We'll see. We'll see what sort of money we're making first. And next up, what I want to do is get rid of a steal. Now, he was one of our first ever signings, but he's just, he does cause issues in incidents, which I'm not a fan of, to be honest. So we're going to try and do the same thing we did with Rey Mysterio 4, where we offer him time off in exchange for morale. And when he leaves, he might come back in the future. So his current contract is $40 per show. If we were to bring him back at any point, he would be $230 per show. So his cost has massively gone up there. We're going to give him a month of paid time off. See if that makes him happy. It doesn't. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I don't know if we're going to ever bring him back anyway. And of course, his client, Myung Jai Lee, has left. So he's not needed for being a manager. So we're going to offer him... In fact, we're just going to release him instead of doing the contract thing. So he's gone. And this means that we need to find a new road agent. And I already know who we're going to bring in. So actually, I don't even need to do filters. I'll just show you. So we're going to bring in a recently retired in the game, Emi Sakurai who you may know from AEW. She's also big in the Joshi scene in Japan, but she's based in the game in the Southeast. She's now retired, but if we look at her skills, what we need for road agency is psychology and experience. She's got 85 psychology and 100 experience. She can also work color commentary, but I think she's not quite fluent in English just yet. Hopefully that's something that changes going forward. And she can also be a manager as well. And she has pretty good stats. I was actually looking at signing her at some point when she was a wrestler and active, but she was just too expensive. But I think she makes a great road agent, so we're gonna bring her in. She currently works with DPW, and that's her only employer. So she should remain based in the United States. So yeah, we're going to offer her a contract. She's quite expensive, but I think her psychology boost to matches will come in huge, especially when we add on the new referee as well. And I think we could really start to improve our ratings going forward. But what we're going to do is set it to be exclusively a road agent, I think. Or never involved in ring work, at least. So we're going to try 300 first and see what she says. She would like higher cut of merchandise. Okay. So 5%. And actually, she's happy with that. Okay, I wasn't expecting that to be accepted. So she's happy with $300 per show. Three years, 5% merchandise. That's a great deal. Oh, yeah, there's another thing we need to do in terms of backstage, and that's persuade David Marquez to be a play-by-play -play commentator. He's got the skill at the minute, but he hasn't got... In fact, when we get a broadcast deal, I'll probably sign somebody better. He is in for the of course, booking team. So what we're going to do actually is untick on-screen personality so he doesn't get upset about missing shows. And yeah, I think we're just going to solely keep him as a booker for now. We did sign him with the aim of having given him double duty. But I don't think he's very good at play-by-play -play, and I think we could do better. So we've signed everybody for the Strong Style Showdown. We've cut everybody. I'm just looking at my notes here. We need to fix morale 
in some cases. So let's try and do that. So we're going to go to any negative morale and we're going to try and make people happy. So we've got a show in like two weeks. So we can't really be giving people that are going to be working it time off. How much money do we have in the bank? Let me just check. So we have 3,348 to play with. So LJ Cleary, I'm pretty sure everyone but Rey Mysterio 4 is going to be in the showdown. Of course, Killer Kai won't, but she's in a storyline with Killer Kelly. So Cody Chun is irritated. So we're going to try and offer him a small bonus of $50. See if that makes him better. And it has. He's now normal morale. Okay. Josh Cody, same thing. He's annoyed. So we're going to try $50 again. Give bonus. And he's still annoyed. Okay. Let's try LJ Cleary. $50 for him. He's now irritated rather than annoyed. How about if we do another 50? He's still irritated. Okay, we're not going to try and give loads of money away. So we'll leave it at that. Um, Ryan Davidson is irritated. So we're going to give him $50. And he now has normal morale. So that gives us only three workers. Did we do Killer Kai? I don't think we did. We missed her. So we're going to give $50 to Killer Kai as well. And she now has normal morale. So we now only have two wrestlers unhappy. At least two active wrestlers. Of course, Rey Mysterio 4 will be leaving in three months time <laughs> did we just cut him now i think we just cut him now that saves us 20 dollars per show for a bit okay so yeah that was quick <laughs> he's gone so we only have two unhappy wrestlers josh cody and lj cleary i'm going to try giving lj cleary another 50 see what happens then and he's still irritated okay how about josh cody and one more 50 for you and he's still annoyed okay so we're going to leave that i don't want to spend too much money on it but we have much better morale in the company now and you see the change there when i click the x it removed a lot of names from the unhappy list which is good okay so we've got even more admin to do before we get to the strong style showdown so now what we need to do is go through the list of all the wrestlers that aren't living near us and we're going to ask them to move closer to where we are of course to save on travel costs adam priest is based in the southeast so he's not paid for travel eagle blanc we're going to ignore for now in fact, we're not. We're going to try. Now that he's in the contract with us, I wonder if he'll do it. So we go talk to worker, move closer, and he says no. So Hallow Wicked is the first guy that doesn't live near us, excluding the European guys that we've just brought in. So we're going to ask him to move closer to us. And he's based in the tri-state, and he says no thank you. Okay. The next guy is Joshua Bishop. He's in the Great Lakes, and we pay for his travel. So we're going to speak to him and ask what he says. And he's happy where he is. Okay. Killer Kai is in the tri-state, so let's try and persuade her to come over. And she says no. <laughs> okay. Killer Kelly Southeast. Viano Jr., of course, who we are his only employer. I'm pretty sure at some point, if that remains the case, he will move over on his own. But we're going to try and ask him anyway. And yeah, okay, that's something that hasn't worked but we're also going to go through everybody and ask them if they will get into better shape which improves their star quality attribute so let's see what happens so adam priest's happy too okay that's good Eagle blanc will you do it too get in better shape and he's not interested at this point of his career okay baron black is not interested what i'll do is i'll stop every time someone says yes instead of having to go through every single one of them okay so cody chun the next one is up for it Eric Hammer has said yes. Okay, Hallow Wicked said no, but that's because he recently did it himself. So that's good. Hyan has said yes. Joshua Bishop said no, but that's because he recently changed. Killer Kai has said yes as well. Killer Kelly is also going to get into better shape. So is Kylie Alexa. So actually, we're getting quite a few here. LJ Cleary said yes. Michael Dante said yes because it's us. So I think that's why. Mike DeVecchio, can he even get in better shape? I don't think so. No, he can't. Nicole Matthews has said yes. Trish Adora said yes, and the rest said no. Okay, so that was actually quite a few people that agreed to it, so that's good to see. And basically, like I said, what that will do is increase everybody that said yes is star quality over time. So yeah, just a little boost in performance skills. But what you'll see is, so if we go to Josh Bishop, you'll see there he's muscular. But if we go to Mike DeVecchio, he's ripped, which I think is the highest one. So basically everybody's going to go up one on that step. Now I can't remember all of the shapes, but there's it goes from like flabby all the way up to rip, basically. And the better shape they're in, the more star quality they have, which can help for promos and other things. So yeah, good to see. And actually, since we went up in size recently, I want to have a look at Company Wars. So of course, we were at the very bottom, but that is now Wrestle Rampage in Australia. 
Now let's see where we're positioned in the world of wrestling. So we are now number 42 overall. So we've leapfrogged Lucha Libre and Laughs, who is one of our local rivals, or the local promotions in our region at least. So we're now the second biggest promotion in the Mid-South, behind Reality of Wrestling, who are up there in the world at 32. We've also gone above Pro Wrestling Australia, German Wrestling Federation, Banger Zone Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Holland and Dutch Pro Wrestling. We're actually slightly behind the new promotion Massive Wrestling Forever and I actually made them a logo so I'm going to add that in now. So there we go, that's a bit better. They're a classic Wild West style promotion so I've gone with sort of wood nailed together for the logo. I found a nice font that fitted. So yeah, that's good. But as I say, we're number 42 now, and hopefully that can improve and we can get onto this first page at some point. But with Wrestling Revolver, their size is sort of 33 in the Midwest, 30 in the Great Lakes. So we've got some catching up to do to get there. But it will happen in time, especially once we get a broadcast deal, once we reach 20 in the Mid-South. But let's zoom forward and get these new signings in the door then. So firstly, we can confirm that The Butcher has signed a new deal, so that's good. We're just waiting now on King Rex, Adrian Butler and Emi Sakurai. And I've got an email saying that my personal relationship with Ace Steel has gotten worse, going from non to strong dislike. And I believe that's because we released him. So that is a shame. I actually like Ace. So King Rex has agreed to his contract, which means that we're going to try and persuade him to move to America again and see if... That's something he's up for now that he's got a deal over here. And no, apparently not. But the same with Viano. King Rex, I think, will move by himself if we are his only employer for quite a while. That happened in my last Local to Global in my personal save last year, where we had Minoru Tanaka, who many on the channel may remember from the ECW series, but we signed him as the veteran of the roster. He was based in Japan, but he was unemployed and eventually he moved over to America. So yeah, hopefully that happens with Viano Free Jr. and King Rex at some point in the near future, because that would save us $100 for each of them. So Emi Sakurai has also signed her contract. And let's take a look at how she compares to Ace Steel, who was our previous main road agent. So if we take a look at her skills, she has 85 psychology and 100 experience compared to Ace's 73 psychology and he also has 100 experience. So she's definitely an improvement on what we had. Slightly more expensive, but I think in the long term, once we're heading towards a broadcast deal and becoming more widely seen across the country, I think having even better match ratings will help. And yeah, we still have one more deal to get done and that's Adrian Butler. So let's sim forward and get him in and we can get that deal done. So with that said, now that we've got a few additions to the roster, we now need to go to the inner circle and make sure that all of the roles have somebody in if they can. So we're gonna filter out ill-suited candidates once again and Emi Sakurai is actually our first person that we've ever signed that's eligible to be a locker room leader. In fact, we didn't look at her attributes. I did look at them when I was scouting off screen. So we're gonna ignore the ones that are related to her wrestling career, but she's a natural trainer, so that means that she might fill the role that Ace Steel had as a female trainer. She also passes on knowledge as well, and she's undemanding, so if we were to leave her off a show, she wouldn't be bothered, but we will be uh, keeping her around. But yeah, the main one, as I say, is passes on knowledge, so hopefully she can start to take on some protégés backstage. Uh, that would be good to see. But yeah, we're going to add her as the first locker room leader in the history of the company. We're going to see if there's any chief enforcers. It doesn't look like there is. There isn't. So head of talent relations. We did have Ace Steel in that role last time, I believe. Obviously, he's now left the company and now hates us. <laughs> but there are some other options in here now. So Adrian Butler does not have a high enough level of respect. Did we set it to ill suit candidates? There we go. Okay, so Emi Sakurai again is the only option. So yeah, she can be head of talent relations, I guess. And next up, we've got morale officer. I think we're going to leave that one blank. We've had nothing but issues with it. Senior road agent. I mean, it's got to be Emi Sakurai again, isn't it? Although, will having too many roles affect how well they do? Maybe let's find out. So I will have a look through here just to see if there's anything about it. Okay, so I've had a read through all of that. And from what I can tell, you can't have too many roles for one person. So we're going to make Emi Sakurai the senior road agent as well. And if we do eventually face any sort of warnings that she's doing too much, we can take her off. Uh, senior referee, I think, should be Adrian Butler at this point. And I think Danio might be leaving. We'll, we'll think about that. I'm not sure whether we should have two referees or not. But I think we're going to make Adrian the senior referee. Okay, so we need to remove Danio first. Hopefully he's not unhappy about that. He seems annoyed. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So we'll add Adrian in. 
And for head women's trainer, I think Emi Sakurai would probably be the best option once again. She has a natural trainer attribute and her effectiveness in this role will be boosted. How many potential students are there? So there's two. I think it says the same for everybody. So we're going to say is not an active wrestler. So yeah, Emi Sakurai is the best one there. So... <sighs> So is there anybody else with the training attribute? I'm just going to look through now. So Halla Wicked actually has it. So maybe he could be the men's trainer instead of Kevin Blackwood. But I don't want to upset Kevin Blackwood. That's the only problem. So Kevin Blackwood's morale. He has normal morale. So what we'll do is we're going to put Emi Sakurai as the women's trainer. And Blackwood is going to be taken off from the men's role. Hopefully he isn't too upset about that. Yeah, he is annoyed. Okay, maybe we can give him a bonus. Although I don't want to spend too much money. And we're going to put Halla Wicked on as a head men's trainer. We've got travel organizer. We're going to leave that. And we're not going to have a stooge, which is fine. For booking team, I'm just checking if there's any booking chemistry issues. And there is. There's actually two. Both of them are to do with Joe Belcastro. Now, he's a really good booker as well with 80. Would it be worth considering taking him out and replacing him? First, we need to see if there is somebody just as good. So we're going to do 80 booking skill to hire. So I've added the based in USA as well. And the only option is Super Dragon. So we're going to actually lower the skill to 70. Because I think even if somebody isn't as good as Joe Belcastro, the hit that he takes at this point twice for bad chemistry with two members of the team will probably gain less creative energy than somebody with less skill and no bad chemistry, if that makes sense. Looking at this list now, we've got Alison Danger at 220. Dave Prazak is at 400, who could come in as a play-by-play. -play. He's got 68 play-by-play. -play. Alison Danger, the colour commentator. Jim Perry, who we've already had, but he, I believe he had bad chemistry and is upset with Vert Vixen, who we no longer have. Yeah, he won't talk to us anyway. That's fine. But there is Marianne Luger, who is a generated wrestler, so a regen, based in the Midwest. She is a wrestler, but she will probably just come in on the creative team. Will complain about being left off shows, so she's not going to be wrestling anyway. Eager Maniac. When perceived as a major star or star, they have a positive natural impact on the backstage environment. Otherwise, they have a negative one. Okay. Maybe we skip over that then. There is RJ City, who has 72 booking skill. He, of course, played a big role in the Mariah May Tony Storm storyline in AEW, which has probably given him that booking skill. But he is $400 per show and only works as a personality, unless we persuade him to be a manager, but I think his wage is just too much. And Super Dragon, who we saw earlier, is $170 per show. Retired wrestler, can't do color or play by play. Has 80 booking skill though, so he's the best on the list, but he's quite expensive. He is a road agent, but he's only got 73 psychology, so he's not better than Halla Wicked, who's our second road agent that we have. Unless there's somebody not based in the United States that we could bring in, so we'll go to anywhere. And we'll also set the skill back up to 80. Okay, so there's a few options, and let's just check all of their money amounts. So we've got Joe Cabre, who's an Irish retired wrestler based in Ireland at the minute. He's a road agent. He's only 60 psychology, so he would be purely coming in for the booking team. Genki Horiguchi, I believe, and he's based in Japan. He's only $60 per show, and he is retiring from wrestling. So I wonder if he'd be up for a move to America. He says no. Okay, let's try and talk to Joe then, see if he'll move across. He's got 80 booking skill. So let's see if he's first open to working in the USA, which he is. And would he move over? And he says no. Okay, so he would be 220 then if we were to sign him. So I think that's a no. Let me just double check that there's nobody else on the roster that could replace Joe Belcastro. Actually, Emi Sakurai has 60 booking skill. So maybe we replace Joe with Emi? I reckon the hit that Joe Belcastro takes for lack of chemistry takes him to lower than what Emi Sakurai would bring in at 60. That's just sort of guessing, but that's sort of my thinking. Because he does get two penalties. I think we'd just try it. Let's do it. And she's happy at the minute. And that means we're looking at generating approximately 167 creative energy. And I wasn't paying attention to what it was before, but I'm sure that's up. In fact, thinking about it, let's alter the booking team and take Joe Belcastro out. Okay, so we're generating 167 at the minute per meeting. If we take Joe out, we're generating 188. So yeah, that was the right decision. And with that said, let's get rid of him. Because I don't think we're ever going to re-sign him because he's got bad chemistry with Michael Dante, who is us. So I don't think it'll be worth doing. So we're just going to release him. OK, so that's the booking team fix. We've done the inner circle. So if we go back to the goals section, then we have now achieved, of course, reaching tiny size. As we said earlier, we have now built an alliance. 
so that's another one ticked off and we've signed Killer Kelly as well so the only two signing goals we have left is Tyler Bate and Malachi Black of course Malachi Black recently signed a new deal with AEW and that's an exclusive one so he can't come in Tyler Bate is a free agent but it's going to cost us a lot of money to bring in but maybe when we get a broadcast deal we can do that of course the next goal in terms of size is to reach small so hopefully that happens in the next few episodes as for creating a training facility i don't think that one's going to happen anytime soon because it's going to cost us a lot of money so if we were to build a bare bones dojo you're looking at fifty thousand dollars and that would be probably where we start off and it's also going to cost $750 per month so yeah that's not something we're going to do and even if we went up to a performance center that's going to cost 2.5 million we'll probably be holding off on that one for another few years but I think eventually once we get a bare bones dojo that could be really good of having our own wrestlers come through the academy and giving us some homegrown talent to work with which would be nice in terms of that being a goal that's not something we can do anytime soon another one of the goals as we said was to launch our our own broadcaster now if we were to do that and we did a tiny broadcaster just in the usa we're looking at 135 dollars setup costs and then 2640 per month it would be cheaper if it was a free internet broadcaster so that is something to look at in the future but for now that is another one that we are not going to be able to tick off. Now I'm going to try and fix some of the morale issues that we've just created by making changes to the inner circle. So let's once again go to morale, any negative morale. And Danilo and Fibio, can we give him a small bonus just to cheer him up? And $50, let's see what he says. And he's still annoyed, okay. Kevin Blackwood's somebody we definitely don't want to be annoyed because he's been a key player so far. So we're going to give him $100 and he's still annoyed. Okay, let's try another 100 Kev and he's still annoyed okay that's something that will wear off but uh, that's a shame that he's uh, annoyed with me but I think it was for the best as Hallow Wicked does have that trainer attribute of course that will help the youngsters on the roster gain gain the basics of the wrestling business sooner which as you can see they're natural trainer and actually before we finish off today's episode there's a couple more things I want to do so obviously earlier in the episode we were bringing in some people on loans now there's somebody else I want to bring in for the junior heavyweight side of the tournament now there's a plan to give somebody a buy and in order to do that I want to bring in somebody from Europe who is basically going to be involved in an angle that does this so I want to introduce the audience to Lavaniel. Now this guy works for WXW and German Wrestling Federation. He's from Germany and he's one of the main heels in WXW and he's pretty successful there. He's won the shortcut to the top tournament. He's a former shotgun champion. He's also a former WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion and he's also a former winner of the World Tag Team Festival which is an achievement he actually got on the game. So he's a great heel over in Europe. He's sort of like an arrogant heel that's full of himself. He loves himself. And his nickname is Prince de Stern, which is Prince of the Stars. And yeah, I think he's got a big future. And I think we're going to see him actually in America at some point in the next few years. And he was actually the guy in the trailer who I showed when I mentioned that we're going to be bringing in Europe's top stars. And we're going to fast track that in the game to at least introduce him to the audience and make him active in America. So right now, if we talk to him, I don't think he's going to come over. Yeah. So he says, I'm not interested in becoming active in the USA. But if we bring him in on loan and use him once, he will become active. And from that point, we can start to think about bringing him in in the future. So, yeah, he will be part of the qualifying show for the Strong Style Showdown. But the only issue is we don't have WXW or GWF in our alliance. So that means we need to try and get one of them in. So if we go to Alliance, I wasn't going to initially invite WXW into the Alliance until later down the line, as we said earlier in the episode, but now I want to get Lavaniel in as I've had a great idea for an angle involving him, which will make him active for us in the future and means we can hopefully convince him to move to America as well so let's invite wxw and they have accepted the invitation which is huge they are the biggest promotion in europe but yeah we're going to propose alliance loan with wxw and bring in lavaniel the prince of the stars he's going to be pretty expensive for his first show with 220 per show but once we can start talking to him 
on our own contract, we can have him on $170 and we could probably negotiate that down to $150. But just to get him active in the USA, as I say, we're going to propose that loan and bring him in. Let's take a closer look at his attributes then, as he's an amazing heel, better as a heel, fitness fanatic plays swagger well and he's also professional and what we're going to do is see if he'll move to United States now that we've got a contract he did say no but we're going to ask him if he'll move closer and he says no as for skills in the ring he's pretty good at technicals with 63 charisma he's got 76 so he's well up there as well as 73 star quality he's got 82 basic 76 consistency 82 safety and 85 stamina so he's solid fundamentally and if we throw all of the loans that we've just made into the trusty spreadsheet you can see here that Lavaniel is fourth from the top when we sort by total skill Jörn Simmons Joseph Fennec Jr and Eagle Blanc find themselves round and about in the middle of the pack although they do jump higher when you sort it only by in-ring skill but Lavaniel does fall which shows that his star quality and microphone give him a big boost over the rest of the roster and even if we sort by star quality Lavaniel is right up there with Rey Mysterio 4 who is now of course gone and Trish Adora and Lavaniel as well he is only 28 years old so there's plenty of room for improvement and I really see him as a diamond in the rough but with that said we're going to leave that here for this episode if you have enjoyed it though make sure you drop a like down below Low. and if we can hit 200 likes as i said we're going to drop the strong style showdown as soon as possible but until next time peace